the vital targets. Naval aviation offers the element of surprise. The mobility of the carriers allowed them to attack Iraq from unpredictable directions. The workhorse of the Navy attack squadrons in Operation Desert Storm was the A-6 intruder, flown from carriers such as the USS Ranger seen here steaming in the Persian Gulf. The A6E intruder has more advanced night attack systems than earlier versions used in the Vietnam War. This combat camera footage comes from an A6E intruder on a night attack mission against a facility in Iraq. The A6E has a night vision sensor called the TRAM, which enables it to attack targets day or night. Another weapon that saw its combat debut in Desert Storm was the SLAM missile. The SLAM is a version of the Harpoon anti-ship missile modified for use against land targets. It has a sensor in the nose which allows the weapons officer to see what the missile is seeing and fly it right into the target. The United States Marine Corps has its own aviation squadron flying many of the same types of aircraft as the Navy. The F-A-18 Hornet was one of the most versatile aircraft in service during the war. The Hornet is a fighter bomber capable of dogfighting Iraqi fighters or attacking ground targets. During the initial phase of the Desert Storm Air Campaign, the Marine F-A-18 squadrons were used in anti-radar missions firing harm missiles, much like their wild weasel counterparts in the Air Force. The Marine Hornets flew from land bases situated around the Gulf. These Marine squadrons are preparing for anti-radar strikes against Iraqi positions. The AV-8B Harrier II jump jet formed the backbone of Marine ground attack squadrons during Operation Desert Storm. These jump jets operated from improvised runways near the front lines, providing close air support for nearby Marine ground units. While Marine intruders and Hornets attacked deep into Iraq, Harriers flew scores of missions into Kuwait, softening up Iraqi ground units for the impending ground assault. To permit aircraft to carry the maximum amount of weapons, they often took off with their fuel tanks only partially filled. Once airborne, they hooked up with aerial refueling aircraft such as these Marine KC-130 tankers. Aerial refueling allowed them to carry out their missions deep into the center of Iraq. The tanker squadrons are one of a host of specialized support units essential to the conduct of air combat. These Marine tankers are filling the tanks of Marine and Navy strike aircraft.
with its air force decimated and coalition air forces dominating the skies, the Iraqis were forced to resort to their Scud missiles to attack Saudi Arabia. Attacks were also launched at Israel in an attempt to widen the war. Scud is a NATO code name for the Soviet R-17 Zemlya ballistic missile. The Iraqis have modified the missiles into a longer-ranged version called the Al Hussein. The original missile, the original Scud, or as the Russians would call it, R-17, is a, a relatively short-range system. Its a, range is around 300 kilometers, meaning about 200 miles. That's not far enough to fire from Iraq into some of the targets that it wanted to hit. Originally, uh, what was happening, this was back in the time of the Iran-Iraq War, the Iraqis wanted to target Tehran, which is quite a ways from the Iraqi border. So what they did is they would take uh, three scuds and chop them up and take the fuel cells out of them and lengthen the missile to put more fuel in it and at the same time cut down on the warhead weight. And this combination of features, cutting down on the warhead weight and ex expanding the amount of fuel in it, gave them greater range. It, it doubled the effective range from around 225 miles to somewhere in the neighborhood of 450 miles to enable them to hit Tehran. Well, it also enabled them in this context to be fired from within Iraq and hit targets such as Dharan or Riyadh in uh, Saudi Arabia, or for that matter, to hit targets in Israel, uh, Haifa or, or Tel Aviv. The large number of mobile Scud launchers proved to be a greater problem than was originally anticipated. At the outset of the war, there were two main groupings of Scuds. Uh, there were, was a group of mobile Scuds and a group of fixed sight Scuds. The mobile Scuds are missiles that are uh, mounted on a large eight-wheel truck. Um, the military acronym is usually TEL, which stands for Transporter Erector Launcher. It means that the vehicle carries the missile and also can erect the missile, put it vertical, and fire it. That was one group. That was about 36 launchers, and they were divided into at least two uh, launch brigades, perhaps more. One of the groups was located uh, north of the Kuwaiti border in the uh, eastern section of Iraq. There was another group of these that were located further out in the west, more towards the Israeli direction in the western desert of Iraq. Now, these, the second grouping was a fixed site grouping. What it was is that the Iraqis started building the Scud missiles themselves, uh, their own local derivative of the Scud. They couldn't build these elaborate uh, uh, mobile launchers, and so they simply took simple base plates uh, to erect the missile, and then they set up concrete bunkers. In the first wave of attacks, these uh, bunker sites were the first ones that were targeted. The reason for this was that the bunker sites were out in the western section of Iraq, uh, near H-2 and H-3 uh, airfield in western Iraq, and they were clearly targeted at the Israelis. There, so there was a fear right from the outset of the war that what the Iraqis were trying to do was drag in the Israelis into the war, and so those were the first targets. Um, at first, the mobile Scud missile launchers were not a major target, but then once the uh, Iraqis started firing these at targets in Israel and at Saudi Arabia, a great deal of attention was paid into uh, hunting them out and trying to destroy them. The reason that they're not terribly accurate is that they were designed originally to, de to, uh, to deliver thermonuclear warheads. These, these weapons were developed in the 1950s by the Soviet Army to, uh, to fire tactical nuclear warheads. So with uh, their export to countries like Iraq or Libya, they have to be used in a different role because these countries don't have small thermonuclear uh, weapons. Instead, they're used with uh, high explosive weapons. And uh, here, they can't really be used effectively against military targets. Their inaccuracy is so great, they have an accuracy roughly on the order of a kilometer or two, about a mile on either side of the target. And if the missile is erected in great haste, as appears to have been the case with many of these missile launches, the accuracy is even worse. It could be five miles off, six miles off, seven miles off. So it's really more a terror weapon. Um, it can be used for the bombardment of very large military targets, such as airfields. We've seen a lot of attacks against Iran, for example. But when you come right down to it, it's mainly a terror weapon to be used against uh, uh, civilian targets that aren't protected. Anticipating an Iraqi missile attack, American forces deployed the Patriot system near cities and bases in Saudi Arabia. The Patriot is a medium to high altitude anti-aircraft missile developed by the U.S. Army. In the mid-1980s, it was modified to enable it to shoot down ballistic missiles, as shown in this 1986 test firing against an Army Lance missile.
At the heart of the Patriot fire unit is a sophisticated phased array radar. The radar locates and tracks the incoming Scud missile and then guides the Patriot missile on an intercept course. Last night about uh, 2145 or 945 in the evening, uh, we'd receive words that there was uh, possible Scud alert incoming Scuds. Uh, with the mission we have, we're always on alert 24 hours a day, so it's just a matter of uh, fine-tuning some things. And uh, shortly thereafter, we received the first volley of Scud missiles uh, headed towards this area and uh, successfully knocked them out of the sky. This footage shows the Patriot in action against Scud missiles. Never before had an air defense missile proved so consistently successful. These encounters marked the first time in military history that one missile had been shot down by another in wartime. The streaks of light falling to earth are the debris of Scud missiles intercepted above the clouds by the Patriot missiles. Although the Patriot proved to be successful in intercepting the Scuds, Iraqi missiles still managed to do some damage. In some cases, the Patriot struck near the Scud, breaking it into three large pieces. Falling to earth at high speed, this debris caused extensive damage to residential neighborhoods in Tel Aviv and Riyadh. During the war, coalition air forces flew 109,876 sorties and dropped 88,500 tons of bombs. The relentless pace of the air missions continued throughout the entire conflict. 35 Iraqi fighters were shot down in dogfights, while no Allied aircraft were lost in air-to-air -air battles. Encounters with Iraqi aircraft were rare. The bulk of Iraq's air force chose to hide in concrete bunkers or flee to neighboring Iraq. Thanks to the severity of the air campaign and the success of the Patriot anti-missile system, the Scud threat also proved minimal. With the Battle of the Skies firmly won, coalition forces switched their focus from strategic targets, including air suppression, to a more tactical role focusing on Iraqi troop concentrations in and near Kuwait. The war was far from over as coalition air forces turned their attention to Iraqi ground forces in preparation for the impending ground assault. 